Hey, what is up guys? And today we're going to be taking a look at a new flight controller from Maytech. It's called the Maytech F405 Wing. Now, this is not for quadcopters. It can possibly be used for quadcopters, but it's totally meant for flying wings here. And this is an absolutely phenomenal piece of hardware here. Let's get right into it. So first of all, it's designed and produced by Maytech themselves and Maytech does everything in-house, which is something really nice and their customer support is absolutely phenomenal. Now, some of the things that they do provide you with are the pins for your servers. If you wanted to use pins instead of direct soldering, which is really nice, they're not re pre-installed. So if you wanted to install them, you can go ahead and do that. If you didn't want to install them, then you don't have to. And they also provide us with extra screws just in case if we lose some here. Now, when you open the package, be careful because they're not in here. They're in the main anti-static bag and you might lose these. I, I just by luck found all of them so take that into consideration when opening it now if we take a look at the board here let's move this to the side it's sandwiched between two pcv plates which have no use other than the fact of protecting the board itself here and and having everything clearly labeled on this top uh, PCB shell and on the bottom we have a bit more information so let's take a look at this this thing has some crazy features and I will get into that right now all right so it's using the f405 microcontroller unit and it's rocking the MPU 6000 gyro which is really good it does have OSD and a barometer and as well an SD card slot four UARTs, one soft serial, two IC squareds, two motor outputs, and seven servo outputs. And this is where it gets interesting. It takes anywhere between three to six S LiPo. It does have current sensing as well, and even gives you the scale down here so you don't have to go through all online documentation to figure it out. Now, this is the really awesome part here. And let's get started. So they do have a 3.3 volt regulator, just in case you needed something that's on 3.3 volt regulators. And all of these STM32 uh, microcontrollers use 3.3 volts. So usually you will end up finding a 3.3 volt regulator on board, which is really nice if you needed that. You also have a 5 volt 2 amp uh, regulator and not only that for the servos if you take a look down here it comes default 5 volt and you can switch it between 6 and 7.2 volts so if you needed that extra power you had these servos that can take up to 7.2 volts and you just wanted that extra torque you can do that which is really crazy you just bridge two paths and it'll, and it'll give you whatever you want 6 5 volt or 7.2 volt it's default at 5 volt as you can read right there now for VTX they have two options as I believe. They have a nine volt regulator on board and a 12 volt. So you can choose between a nine volt for your VTX or a 12 volt, which is really, really nice. I really like seeing this. So this is a really well thought out piece of uh, hardware here. And I did mistake this, the five volt, it has two five volt regulators on board. The five volt regulator VX, which is gonna be for the servos, and I'll show you that right now, it takes a, it can output a maximum of six amps, which I think should be plenty enough for a lot of wings out there. Now, this is the Big Brother version. They also have a smaller one, which we'll be taking a look in a separate video. So let's go ahead and crack this guy open. Now to open him, all you need is just a small screwdriver. Make sure you don't lose these screws. They're pretty tiny. What I really love about Maytech is everything is really well labeled and everything is really well documented and their customer support is absolutely phenomenal. I found them a couple times on forum finding people with issues and actually fixing their things, which is really nice. So as you can tell, here they do have us with some spacers and it's using these little standoffs right here and it does have dampening which is really nice also so if you do have a lot of vibrations this will help out the gyro into keeping those vibrations to a minimum thus allowing your your, your wing to fly as smooth as possible now, if we take a look at the bottom here, this is where you would put in your battery input. So it takes three to six S output. And this is this battery output, this battery input here, the voltage that's coming in from the battery is routed directly to these. So you can put a maximum of two motors here. You can put more, but currently this is set up with two motors. This is where you'd give power to your ESCs for your motors right here, these two pads right there. Now, if we take a look here, the USB is sticking up, which is really nice because most of the time you don't have space to stick in your USB and your flying wing from the side like other flight controllers do. This is also a very well thought out little feature here. So they did take their time developing this. Now, as you can tell, it does have a lot of filtration. It has huge inductor here to handle all that current and do everything we need. Now, let's move along the board here. Now, if we take a closer look down here, it says VX. Now, what does VX mean? Well, we also find VX up here, and these are for the server outputs so VX currently is the voltage that the servos are going to be operating on now default as you can tell VX here we have 6 and 7.2 volts it's if it's not if none of those two are bridged right there then what we have is 5 volts going to the servos now if you wanted 6 volts you would just bridge that if you wanted 7.2 volts you would remove the bridge from the 6 volt and just put it on the 7.2 volts and that activates a resistor to tell the regulator what voltage to output which is 
really great. So it does have two 5 volt regulators on board. So this is kind of like an all-in-one flight controller for a wing here. Now moving on to this side here, what they do provide us is they give us an RSS iPad. So if you wanted just a direct RSS iPad, that would work right there. And if you wanted to connect your S bus, it would be on port SBS, which is right here, which is really nice. And uh, if you wanted to use, let's just say iBus or whatever, you would go to RX2. Now SBS is for iBus and it is also on UART2. So all you have to do is enable Serial RX for UART2 and you should be good to go. But you just have to know which one to solder to. So if you're using PPM and iBus, you would go to RX2. And if you're going with SBus, you would just put it on the SBus. And both of these are connected to the same UART. However, this one has the inverter for your SBus, so you have nothing to worry about. So that's a really nice little feature. And they do give us, they provide us with a lot of UARTs and a lot of 5 volt regulators. Now, the 5 volt regulators on this side of the board are is separate, separated from the regulator that's going to be going for the servos, which is really nice here. All right, so now if we take a look here, so it does have a maximum of 7 servo outputs here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And here's the seventh right there. So that's really nice to see. If you wanted to, for the seventh extra power, you'd probably have to bridge one, with one of the servos here to give it that extra power. So that's really nice in that perspective. As you can see, ground VX. And like I mentioned, VX is currently default at five volts until we bridge one of these two. If we wanted a six volt or 7.2 volt, then these would output those 7.2 or six volt that you wanted. But I'm currently gonna keep it on five volt because this is gonna be going on a long range testing wing. Now for VTX and camera, this is also really nice. So we do have have cam this would be your yellow wire for your camera here we have the ground and here we have a 9 volt here so if your camera doesn't take 9 volt I'd ha even if it does I highly recommend what you do is you give your video out right here you give it the ground and you jump all the way here and give it the 5 volt for your camera this is what I would do and for VTX, you would do the yellow wire here which is going to your VTX ground and then just give it a 9 volt now if you if your VTX for some reason could not take 9 volt or you wanted to give it a 12 volt, there's a jumper on the back which you can change this to a 12 volt and I'll show you that in a little right now. Alright, and on here, on the side here, we also just have a couple more UARTs and as well as a 5 volt regulator. Now this is the 5 volt regulator I believe is from the same one on the main board and has nothing to do with the servo side which is really nice. I like, really like that how it's separated there. Here we have a couple more outputs. We do have our boot button there just in case if we brick it. Now I forgot to mention in the beginning of the video also that it, the, the the ESC power is going to be here and the signal for the ESC would be right there. So this would be for motor one, or motor two, or you want to say ESC one and ESC two. And there's even a ground for the signal of the ESC if you wanted to place it there. Now you will have to solder these because it's not coming in the default size, but that's not a really big problem here. Now let's take a look at the back side of the board. It still gets a little bit more interesting. So one thing to take note of, I'm really loving these protective PCB boards which have more than one use. So you can use it either to double-sided tape, stick this to your, your wing, or just use it for the info that you need here. And it has really nice texture to it here on this side. All right, let's put this to the side and let's take a look here. So this is currently the back side. And as you can tell here, we have our shunt resistor. This is what's going to be giving us the current reading of uh, what's going on with these motors. So you can keep a better overall track of how much current you've used or how much amperage you've used. And here we just have the couple of the other regulators going on board and we do have an SD card expansion for black box in case you have any issues, which you can easily access. So that's really awesome as well. And down here, this is the jumper for the 12 and nine volt. So currently I, I believe this is bridged to 12 volt. So the nine volt there is going to be 12 volt. And if we remove this bridge, it'll be nine volt. And I will have to double check in the documentation there. So overall, this board is a really, really well designed and very well thought out little piece of hardware. And I can't wait to install it and get it going. And this is going to be our main platform for our long range testing of things like the 2.4 gigahertz Furious FPV combo, as well as the TBS Crossfire R9M and R9 and other things as well as time goes on. So currently this is looking like a really, really nice candidate for a lot of wing users. And I think this could be possibly called the mother of all all in one flight controllers for iNav wings. So yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a really nicely built uh, piece of hardware here and I'm pretty sure many of you will probably agree with me here and well that's going to conclude it for my review of the Maytech F405 wing and I will have the Maytech F411 wing up next which is its little baby brother it's using a little smaller microcontroller unit with less pinouts but it's still an F4 flight controller and I'll see you in the next one peace out guys